Hey, welcome, or welcome back, to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that this rather pretty black and grey smoky eye has been achieved with one of the latest makeup obsession palettes. If I can get this to reflect properly so you can actually read it. There we go. Black is the new black. So, if you want to find out just exactly how well or not that these shades behaved. My friend, you've chosen the right place to be. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I will have shown you this in the intro. This is the Black is the New Black from Makeup Obsession. Uh, apparently only shade 3 is a pressed pigment, which is the red one, unsurprisingly. Mirror, as you always get in these, and they do actually fold back nicely, which is awesome. This is what it looks like. So this red one here is the only one that is a pressed pigment, the rest are all shadows. Let me put a picture up here. This arrived, or I ordered this, the same day that I saw this advertised as being one of the new palettes that Lime Crime released. And they've got the neon one. They've also got this one. So it seems like Makeup Rev, before anybody accuses Makeup Rev of copying Lime Crime, this was out first. Right, I'm going to chuck some swatches up the side there that I've just done. Um, although it has a red in it, this is black is the new black, so we want to find out what the blacks are like, don't we really? The blacks and the greys. Um, so that's the colours that I'm going to be using today. Now, this is a teaching channel, and due to my chronic pain, I can't blend as quickly as I used to. So I go in depth with it, I talk you through step by step by step, all the blending is done in real time so that absolute beginners can keep up. Now I'm aware that if you're more expert it could be a little bit slow for you. Just speed me up using a speed widget, okay? I want this to be accessible for all skill levels. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And on my eyes, as ever, is my Crown Pebble Cotton Eye Primer. Details of um, discount code for that. And any other discounts that I've got is listed in the description box. Now, I've got deep set eyes. I'm currently hearing them called uh, double lidded eyes which makes me think of cats with a membrane that slides across but a lot of people with deep set eyes are told or think they have hooded lids because we get a lot of the same issues we get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid um, when we're cutting our crease you have to cut onto the upper lid rather than just the socket and even when we're using glitter glues we get a bare patch through here I'm going to explain to you the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes because how you deal with them when you're doing your makeup is very different. So, when I relax my brows and look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So, I haven't got a hooded lid. It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to your lash line part or all of this lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. If you have deep set eyes like myself, if I, because this is the eye I'm blinding, if I cover my mobile lid and close my eye, can you see that I've got as much lid again tucks back away? 
if I cover the static lid and close it, you can see there's part of the static lid gets folded back under as well. So that's why we get the same issues, but how we deal with it is very different. If you have hooded lids, get a brush like this or a pencil brush and sketch out where you need your new crease to fall. It will reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes and you'll be absolutely fine. If like me, however, you've got deep set eyes, what you need to do is when you're blending your colour through your socket line here, through your crease, every so often you stop and relax your brows and just check that you can just see that colour peeping just above. You will eventually get to the stage that you'll know your eyes and you won't need to put the guidelines in and you'll know whether you've blended up high enough, but until then that's the easiest way for you to physically follow one of my tutorials. Right, let's get started. So I am going to grab I've actually got choices because I've actually cleaned all my brushes. Um, I've got a couple of films linked in my description box. One of them is brushes that I recommend. And this is one of the ones from the AliExpress. This is their Blending Brush 7. And I'm going to start off by going into Cryptic, which is the Dove Grey. Not too much of a kick up, but you are picking it up. What I like about this eye primer, I've not set it, but it's not sticky and it hasn't creased as you can see. And you can blend on it straight away without having to pat it on first to set it. So I'm going to start off, I normally leave about three or four mils between the top of the colour and the bottom of the brow, just so my brow highlight shows better. But if you've had to move your crease line up, you may need to go right up to your brow. I'm just blending this in. I have dry patches here and here on both eyes where I do sometimes struggle to get pigment to go on without looking patchy or skipping. Um, but I, I can tell the difference between a scrappy pigment and one that is reacting badly to my eyes so I will let you know if that does happen. Now when I'm blending like this I'm doing little circular movements when I'm going from the outer to the inner part, going towards my nose, I'm doing the circles this way. And then a little bit of a bounce at this bit here, and then reversing the direction to come back again. Now the reason I do that is because I've got um, eyelids that move. I'm 45 years old and I've lost 13 stone. So, you know, my lids are going to move, but I know 22 year olds who genetically have very flexible eyelids. But by doing this circular movement, you're gently moving the lid around without stretching it. So you won't end up, because this is the eye that got stretched at the ophthalmic hospital quite a bit when I was five years old, and it's caused this super deep crease in here, which you can see I don't have on this eye. Um, so, yeah, that's why I do these circular movements, just because it's the most effective way to blend, the quickest way to blend and the best way to make sure that you don't get white areas that are missed where your skin has moved while you're blending. So I'll do the same thing this side. Just set my upper limit there and then I always like to sit back and check that I'm getting about the same shape as well because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical. It's always good just to just to sit back every so often and just double check that the shapes you're making are looking the same both sides. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? Or are you at the start of your day watching me while you're getting ready? If you are, I hope you're having a fantastic day. And if your day didn't go too well, then I hope tomorrow's better. Okay, that's gone on reasonably well actually. Greys are not the easiest of colours to do. They can, you know, it can sometimes be very difficult to get the pigment to build up, but that's built up 
really quite nicely without too much hassle. Right, so I'm going to clean the brush off on my microfiber cloth and I'm going to go into smoked, which is the next deep, the next depth of grey, the sort of mid grey. This is what I call school uniform grey because this is the colour of my school uniform when I was a kid. Couldn't wear grey for years when I first left school, just made me think like I was at school again being bullied. I think I was about 30 before I actually managed to enjoy wearing grey. Even now it's not a colour that I um, wear very often, unless it's like a grey mild t-shirt with a design on the front or something. I've got a couple of plain grey tops, but I don't wear them very often. So you can see I'm just blending this the crease and up a little bit just so it blends in with the lighter grey that we've already applied. And that's actually blended quite nicely together. Hmm. What I like about these Makeup Obsession palettes, they've got these little dimples here so you can easily pop the shades out. So if you've got quite a few of their palettes, which I have now. Sorry, it reminded me to take some tablets, but I've already taken them. Um, you can sort of, if you've got quite a few of their palettes, which as I said I have, you can get a either a blank palette or just use one of their palettes if you want to take one on holiday with you, or if you're going away for a weekend and you don't you know, you're only using sort of maybe three, maybe four shades each time. Um, a ten shade palette you could probably get three or four different looks out of. So you could do like your top row of daytime neutrally type shades or lighter shades. And then the bottom row for darker shades for the evening. My eye actually started to water this side, so the pigment got a little bit wet there, which is why it's clinging a little weird. That's just my eye being annoying. That's buffed out quite well though. That's good. Just double checking that I'm getting the same sort of shape here. So I've got around this side. I used to always wear greys and black and silver. It's my go-to colour for going out for a long, long time. And then I discovered colour. Right, let's pop that back and grab a more tapered blender. Let's go for... This is what they call a contour brush number nine. And I'm going to go into the one that is literally just called black. Now blacks are hard to do. So let's see how well this one performs. Because you can't always go by swatches. I'm just going to buff along that deeper line there. I don't want to take it too high up because obviously I want to still see the other two colours. But this is, um, I always tend to put a deeper colour through my crease. It's especially helpful if you have had to move your crease up because it will, it will give you that deeper line through here. Uh, which optically will give the illusion that that part of the eye is further away, it's deeper. So you will actually, it will give more of the illusion that you have actually got a mobile lid rather than having created a mobile lid. I 
I'm just going to pop a little bit of the black on the outer corner here. This is not bad actually for a, a black. It's going on a little bit patchy in this corner, but again, that could be because hay fever and fibro, my eyes are a bit watery at the edges, but so far I'm quite liking it. So again, just buff it through the crease. Wordy wordy blendings. And sometimes this doesn't always work for me on these deep creases here. You can see I've got that tiger striping. Um, sometimes when I'm blending, because obviously I blend quite a few times to diffuse the edges, sometimes I can get it to blend out. Sometimes I actually have to stretch the lid out. It looks like I'm going to have to stretch the lid for this one. Don't do this if the circular movements work for you or you will end up with horrifically deep creases like what I have got. And trust me, once you've got them they only ever get worse. And again, just a little bit of black on the outer edge there. I can tidy that up with some micellar water before I put my foundation on. Okay, that's actually, that's not a bad black. It's not the most pigmented black I've used, but it's not the worst black I've ever used either. I'm just cleaning that brush off. Freshly clean brush and then I go and use a black on it, look at that. Okay. Right, I'm going to grab this Morphe M321 and I'm going to go into Shaded. Now you should never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, but I am going to wet this. So I've coated the brush all the way around. I'm just going to use a fixing spray to wet it. This is the I Heart Revolution Vanilla and Coconut. You can use anything. You can use a moisturising spray like Maria Badescu or Fix Plus. You can use a setting spray, a priming spray, finishing spray, just plain water even. I'm just applying the pigment wet. Now, whenever I use the palette for the first time, I don't cut the crease because I want to see how much opacity the shimmers have and whether they can actually cover the area. And that's actually done remarkably well to cover that black. So that's good. Right. Clean and dry the brush off and go back in to shade it again to do the other eye. And with this one I do have to stretch the lid out otherwise the pigment just packs loosely into the crease and then as I blink my eye through the day it ends up coming down so that's where I need to go to roughly. Yeah, do not do this if you don't have to. Otherwise, you're opening yourself up for a whole lot of headache. And then I'm going to go into Mystery a la Toya. It's a mystery, oh it's a mystery. Have you seen my musician inspired one where I did Toya? That was a fun film, that was part of the um, Sweet Sixteen collab. So, and I'm going to use this on the 
outer, middle to outer part of my lid. I'm going to buff it in to what was the first one shaded. Just using the very tip of the bristles. And pack the pigment on, bring it across, and again just using the tip of the bristles, blend it and fade it into the black on the outer edge. This is actually a really, really nice palette. Me of 1990s would have loved this palette. Actually, me of now quite likes it. But I do tend to do more colour than I do black and white. But it's always nice to have a good sort of you know, black and white options. Did I go into the right one? Yeah, I did. Actually, I'm not sure I did after all that. might have gone into the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oopsie. But you see, I leave stuff like that in because everyone has little cock-ups every now and again. I think it's important that you see that we're human and we do it too. Right, I'm going to pause you briefly while I go and put foundation on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. So, you will see me instantly, I will see you the very next time I press the record button. I am back. And I'm going to go into, I think I'm going to go into that deep, that red one just to see what it's like. This is that flat top brush that I showed you earlier. Well, I'm just going to run that along the bottom lash line there. I think I grabbed some of the black when I did that that time. Never mind. Just drag some of the black down from this side. It's easily fixed. It's only makeup. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl Salt Queen palette. Love, love, love this brush. I'm going to go into one called Shadow, which actually is a shimmer. I'm just going to use that to buff the lower lash line. Now, you can use shimmers like a matte. They're not as easy to blend, because obviously they're not designed to be blended, they're designed to be packed on. But you can, if you blend them gently enough, you can sort of blend the shimmer pigments off and just leave the base colour from underneath. And that gives you a lot of different options there. I really quite like that. Right, now this is a um, lip pencil that I bought years ago from eBay. I'm going to go into Mist, which is the, just the plain white. I'm just going to use that to go as my brow highlight today, rather than a shimmery one. I've got to be honest, this will only really work for you as a brow highlight if you are light to medium. If you've got deeper skin, that's just that's going to look awful, to be quite frank. Um, I'd rather they'd not put that in there and put maybe another another red toned matte. Never mind. Um, highlighter, which highlighter should I use today? I think I'll go into this Wet n Wild one. This is their White Raven, which has a skull on it. We still just about see the skull. It's got a slight, it's white with a tint of pink, so it'll pull in this colour here. I'll pop that on the inner corner. I 
along under the tear duct and just blend it in just there like so. You don't have to bring it along under the tear duct if you don't want to, but I just think that's one of the prettiest looks for my shape eye anyway. If it doesn't suit you then just, just do you in a corner. Hmm. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck some mascara on, throw some more of this highlight all over my face, choose a lippy, do something with my hair and I'll be back. Hey, there we go, hair's gone ridiculously fluffy again. Well then when doesn't it? So this is my final look and my first impressions of the, I'm trying to get it to re reflect properly so you can see it, black is the new black palette. Um, I actually really liked this, it blended much nicer than I was expecting it to. Um, greys and blacks are not the easiest of, of shades to blend together but this blended really really nicely so I'm looking forward to trying out some more smoky looks with this one but yeah Makeup Obsession have really improved their quality of shadows um, the last couple of palettes of theirs that I've used this one and London's Calling were both really good I was really impressed with them so, there we go. What do you think? Given this colour scheme, which shade would you have chosen? And if I stick that picture of Lime Crime one back up there, looking at the two, and given that this was six quid and that's probably going to be 30, 40 something, I can't remember how much their eight ones go for. I think it's about 30 quid. Could be more, I don't know. But either way, this is going to be a lot cheaper. Which of the two are you most likely to go for? Now you've seen how these work. Hmm? I know which my choice will be. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed because I'm still getting people saying there getting unsubscribed and they're not getting notifications through so that's extremely frustrating for me and for you as well no doubt uh, so yeah just just double check that for me please before you go uh, if you like it give me a thumbs up if you didn't like it give me a thumbs down but tell me why if you give me a thumbs down be brave enough in the comments politely to tell me why you thumbs it down did you not like the palette do you not like the brand did you not like the look or did you just not like me polite now if you're new to my channel hi hello welcome i'm a slightly scatty half welsh half yorkshire bird living in the south of england who thoroughly enjoys makeup and finds it a good distraction to the chronic pain that I am currently living with. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'd like to see a few more of my films. Um, and I would love it if you'd like to subscribe and join the gorgeous 4F family that we have. So, there we go. That's quite enough for me for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.